Hello everyone, this is Adrian from Menagerie Herpetology. Today I'm going to be talking about the new Spider Robotics Power Module. It's for use with a home thermostat. In this case I'm using an Emerson Sensi Wi-Fi thermostat so I can control it when I'm elsewhere, which is really nice. You will need those two things, obviously. You'll need some screwdrivers. The Sensi has a uh, Phillips head, so and then so I got a Phillips head, and then the other one has a flat head on it. So the power module has a flat head. So I would just buy a small set like this, or you can buy them separate. But make sure that you have those two just in case. All right. Um, I also bought 18 slash three, which means 18 is how big it is. Three is the strands. All right. So this has red, white, and green strands. So you see I didn't use all three. I would get 18.3 just in case you have to use all three all three ports on the power module. Um, if you know otherwise, like with the Sensi, you can just buy an 18.2 and it'll work. Um, you also need some wire strippers and cutters. This is a combo cutter and stripper. You'll see the cut edge right here and then the stripping holes here. What you do is you unlock it, so you'll move the unlock, it'll open it up, you can cut, and then you'll choose a length to put in here, close it, clamp it, lock it, and then let go. If you hold it down and strip, it'll be really hard to strip, and also um, it will end up stripping the whole wire in the case when you have to open up and pull out the three strands, you'll end up stripping everything together. So you want to let it loose and pull and it'll strip really easily. Um, safety wise um, you want to make sure you have these they're, I believe they're called wing nuts or screw on wire connectors. Um, you put it on the end of a wire that you're not using and you screw it in. It'll stay on the end. The ones that came with the Sensi don't look like they have actual screwing capabilities in there. Um, so I also had some separate ones like this if you'll look inside the wing nut, you'll see this spiral. That's how you know you can screw it on, which is what I did here. Um, also, whenever I do electronic stuff, I always have this a fire extinguisher handy. This is a smaller one. It's like $15. It's a small one. It's good to have um, if you have reptiles because you're going to have heating elements. You're going to have electronic components. And if a fire happens, you know, that will be really bad, so you want to immediately get control of it before any of your animals uh, pass away. Also, I would recommend getting a uh, fire alarm if you don't have one already. I have a combination fire and CO2 alarm that I have, um, so if it, anything catches on fire or anything like that, it'll go off. If there's too much CO2 in the air, it'll go off, you know, because neither, neither are good. You know, snakes have the one functioning lung. You don't want to mess them up any way, any way that you um, can keep it from happening. So, those are the items that I used. Of course, you'll need a radiator. I'm using a Delonghi digital radiator. Uh, I think you spell it, you say it Delonghi, um, but I have one for that. And the reason I'm upgrading to a system like this is really to accurately control heating, not to waste electricity, to keep it steady. For my reptiles, for my snakes, I have bloods and balls right now. I have a random boa and a bearded lizard who is looking at me angrily right now. As angry as they can be. Um, so I get got this because I really wanted it to be even throughout the room. Um, I also got some fan upgrades um, and stuff like that. I recommend the Vornados. They're really nice. Um... And of course the humidifier. So I'll have this in the middle of the room going and it'll keep it steady and nice for me. It won't waste electricity. won't be randomly, you know, swinging half a degree or more from one end to the other. You know, you don't, you want to keep nice steady temperatures for your animals. Uh, I keep my room at 82. It's because I have a bow and bloods in here. You don't want it too hot. Um, and then for the balls, their heat tape goes up a little bit. Um, that's what keeps 
them warm but there's that gradient in there but heating the room helps save electricity completely because your heat tape's not cranking all the way up and um you know constantly like that if you have a thermostat attached to your radiator you will be able to heat your whole room and be able to keep it steady and save electricity that way which is a-okay um, another safety thing if you want you can wear insulating gloves I didn't because we're dealing with really low voltage it would feel like a shock you know which thankfully I didn't get shocked but and then um, also you might want to wear glasses uh, I have glasses which I wear already um, they're not safety glasses you know so something could get in there um, when you're cutting dealing with anything cutting where something could fly off and into your eye or anything like that you'll want to wear glasses of some sort not a necessity but recommended um, so I'm going to show you how to cut this wire and strip it so I bought five feet of it just in case and I knew I'd be doing this video so I wanted to get that in here so you unlock it take it cut where you want you can make, make sure it's square and cut now because this has three strands it's rather thick if you end up with a five or a seven you know good luck if you have that that kind of muscle power I would be jealous so you'd set it in this last one here close it lock it let it go and let's see it still takes some power but here I'll do it off screen I have to I'm sweating a lot so I'm gonna grab it with my shirt and pull so we did that I actually got it now you see there's some fluff in there I'm not exactly sure why that's there but it works without it so I just cut the fluff off so I'm gonna do that really quick so we went ahead and did that you'll, you'll take your strands and separate them out Let's see I have to look over the camera okay separate them out now I made them quite long so I cut a little bit farther so I could pull them apart farther because in my thermostat and I'll show you in a second in the thermostat the red is at the top and the white and the um, other one will be at the bottom um, so they're pretty far apart so you might want to do a longer cut but for the sake of the video I did a shorter one now this one you'll put it the smallest here close it oops lock it pull ta-da easy easy peasy and you'll do it with all three of them and get it ready for, to put inside the thermostat here all right so here's the inside of my thermostat it has a nice level on it show you when it's straight Ooh, there we go okay anyway so here I'd recommend putting it in RH the red in RH if you're doing heat recommend putting it in RC if you're doing cold just because it's a naming convention just so you know what the thermostat is for because I'm using a heating element put it in RH and then the other one I choose white you put it in WE now this was recommended to me by Dion who owns spider uh, robotics um, I'll put his email down in the description as well so if you have issues setting up your power module you can email him he's brilliant he helped me figure this out thank you Dion um, Zach Green helped as well uh, with finding out what I needed to put this together. So you put the W in the WE slot, and I tried it with the C. And actually, let's tighten that down. Uh, you want to make sure everything's tight so nothing buzzes at you when you plug it in. I tried it with the C to see if I could run it without batteries. It just did not want to turn on. It decided that was too many wires. It didn't want to do it. And the radiator would actually not turn on when I did that. So here I'll be using RH and W. Cap the green. And then we look at the power module. See right here. Similar naming convention. Red. So you, if it's RH or RC, either one gets put into R. W is white and then C is the common. 
So if you need to use C to power something without batteries, you can do that. Because my mad batteries have got ornery on me. So it'll show you that right there. Um, so for this, it's the Phillips head. You just take the Phillips. And I'm not going to take these wires out because it takes a little bit of shuffling to get them in there. But when you undo it, doo -doo 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 -doo, it'll open up a slot. You shove that wire in there and really just push it back because it has to fit into a tiny slot in the back and you want to make sure it's all the way in there so it doesn't pop out when you're moving it or start buzzing at you um, so lefty loosey righty tidy of course so when it's in there you tighten it back up and test it pull it on a little bit try to twist it push it yep see so it stays in make sure the other one and you can make cut the copper if you realize there's some copper sticking out here you can cut it off if you want um, I don't know if that's necessary or not um, but I would try to have as little copper out as possible um, but this works for me I really don't want to unscrew it because <laughs> if I screw it back and it doesn't work again I'm gonna be so angry but because I've been on this for a couple hours now so you have that and then once all that's done you want to connect it put it the right way first Connect it in, and all those things will go in there. Ta-da, you have that. And the Sensi, um, in the booklet it'll say, if you're doing heating, you won't necessarily need to connect anything else. You hear that clicking? That's showing you that the thermostat is working, um, which is good. So if it's clicking like that, you set it up here. I'm going to set it to 99. It'll keep clicking. Heat. There we go. Okay, and it'll keep clicking, keep clicking, trying to turn on the heating element. Of course, we don't have one. Um, one thing I forgot to mention was on here. If you want to test your power module, if it's working, important. I should have talked about that earlier. But um, So Dion ran me through this testing of the thermostat worked. If it was clicking like that, it means it was working. To test if your power module is working, you'll put one into W, W, and then you'll take the other end of the strand and touch the other white end to the R while it's plugged in. And while you're doing this, you'll have a lamp plugged in, just a regular lamp. Just grab one from your house somewhere. Plug everything in, and when you touch it to the R, the lamp should come on. So make sure it's in the on position, of course. So if it turns on, it means the power module is working, the thermostat is clicking. Yeah, the thermostat's working. Um, I'm going to switch really quick to show you how the Dolby radiator works when it's plugged in there. Alright, so here we have the lamp I was testing with, but um, that's a pylon water changer. Okay, so we have it plugged in, set it up really high. We have it plugged in, plugged in, and there we go, it's on. I, my room's messy. I'm so sorry. Um, and then you just set up your radiator. And as long as it is cooler in the room than the thermostat wants it to be, this will be on. If it's hotter, it'll just turn completely off. Um, and that's how you'll save money and make sure all the stuff is even, all the heat. So thank you for watching. I really hope this helps, especially of those of you with the Sensi. If you want to try that out, and this the long heat radiator and the spider robotics power module, and of course a built-in surge protector. I would use the surge protector. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope this helps, and I hope you think to pick one up and try it out. Thank you.